Hello everybody and welcome to Cubo. My name is Quentin and today is June 4th, 2024. I am re-recording today's news segment for those of you that caught the stream because I forgot to select the relevant audio channels. However, it'll only take me a moment to re-record them. So, first things first, big announcement. I am currently working on a new project where I am going to be creating a roughly, hopefully, 12-hour compilation of Helldivers 2 content. Mostly unedited, just diving and letting you guys enjoy it. But with no further ado, I am going to move us on to the news section of this week. Beginning, as always, with last Tuesday, we were making good progress on the previous major order, which was to secure the path to Meridia. The major order had us holding Fenrir 3, Angel's Venture, and Touring until the major order completed. However, by Tuesday, the bugs were beginning to fight back. While we were focused on the major order, two more defenses began on top of Akamar 4. Cirrus to the northwest and Veld to the the south. We really needed to hurry and blow this planet. By the time of the stream, we had all three planets and had to hold them above all else for about 40 hours. Finally, we received another dispatch, this time an emergency alert. Emergency alert! Spore production on the Meridian supercolony has risen to critical levels. Planets in the vicinity of the supercolony are under imminent threat of infestation. Emergency evacuation orders have been issued. All Helldivers are called to address this critical situation. After the stream, some important developments came through. By 8.30 Mountain Daylight Time, Veld had been completed. With all three planets held for the Major Order, and as of editing the previous video, we had about 18 hours for the Major Order and no active defenses, meaning that we had unofficially completed the Major Order, and it seemed that by the end of Thursday we'd be ready to rid the galaxy of the Meridian Super Colony. Additionally, though we had lost the defense on Cirrus, nearly 40,000 divers had taken to the planet to rectify that once the major order had been secured. By 3.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, the planet had passed 92% with two hours to go. Likewise, with Akamar 4, nearly 11,000 divers had gotten the planet up to over 75% by that same time. Something I feel needs to be addressed is the player count discussion. I have myself fed into the narrative of the game dying, but given some toxic interactions, even on the previous few videos, I'd like to rectify that by looking at SteamDB for a moment. Looking at the overall charts, it, it on first glance looks pretty bad because we have this massive boost up to 458,000 gradually dropping down a little more. And then we have the boost that was around the time of uh, the reclamation regarding defeating the automatons the first time. And then we gradually start dropping more again. And now we're all the way down to things like this, where we have like 20,000 players. But this has actually jumped up. This was 20,000 was at the beginning of the stream. This is now at 47,000, which kind of leads me to my point. So if I lower this down, say a month, we have at the beginning of May, well over 100,000. We gradually drop down. We have for the first time, we drop below 100,000 uh, around the middle of May. And then we rise up a bit and then we drop back down and now we're sitting at this average of about 50,000 and it's still gradually dropping, but it's dropping slower and slower as time goes on. We're seeing this, this bell curve as it, it start. that's not right. We're seeing this curve as it starts to even out. We're not losing as many players as fast now. And even more so, we're still getting over 50,000 a day and who knows maybe that, that that'll change maybe 47,000 will be our peak for today and it'll you know look pretty bad and we'll, we'll be getting now less than 50,000 but let's look at that because these are the most played games on Steam right now Counter-Strike 2, Dota 2, Destiny 2 these are massively popular games with 600,000, 276,000 so many different players but then we drop down from source to call of duty and it drops down to 92 and then to 90 78 77 68 you get my point dropping down to 17 47,304 that's us at the beginning of the stream we were all the way down at 29 because we had about the 20,000 but that's the thing our peak times if we organize these by peak we're still sitting at about 25 that's what we're looking at and you have these other games that are in that realm. And even something as 
uber popular as Grand Theft Auto V. If we go to the maximum, it had a maximum thing of 364,000 back in 2015. Now, granted, Grand Theft Auto Online had, or actually, Grand Theft Auto V and Grand Theft Auto Online had already existed for up to two years at that point. So it came to Steam and it was just a port and people weren't as interested. Fine. But consistently, since 2015, they've averaged 50 to 100,000. Uh, we had the, the boosts here, where we went up to 200,000, all the way up to pretty recently in 2023, almost 300,000. But we've dropped back down. And so now there's 59,000 players, 24 hour peaks of 130. But we're still seeing this massive drop off. And then we look at other really popular things. Like, for example, Elden Ring is a really big one because it has that same curve. It got almost a million, 50,000 shy of a million. But it drops down to 50,000, rises back up to 100, drops back down, and it evens out in the same way that Helldivers did. The only difference being that Helldivers dropped a lot more slowly than something like Elden Ring. Now, they're not the same game. I get that. Let's look at something that might be a little more similar like Dead by Daylight, it started way less popular. At launch, the game peaked out at 42,000, and it got all the way up to its maximum in, 21, in 2021 of 100,000. Well, that's barely more than what Helldivers is doing right now, and it dropped off down to where it's at now, about 50, 60,000. And then look at something Fallout 4, incredibly popular game, 46,000, 24 hour peak 57,000. Drop that to the main thing, it drops down. And it's been consistent there for years. You can look at this for most of the games on here and they're indicative of this. Look at something like Dota 2 and Counter-Strike 2, it's gonna be a little different. Dota 2, go to the maximum, it has this wild range and it's stayed consistently popular because it's a MOBA style game. It's going to be a little bit different with its Steam results. It's also kind of PC exclusive. Counter-Strike 2, similar thing, kind of a PC exclusive. And we look at these numbers pretty consistently low here up until it jumps massively in 2015. And then we get these, these increasingly big jumps as PC gaming becomes more popular. And then we have, more recently, the release of CS2. And from there, it's been c pretty consistent. 1.3 million, 1.5 million, 1.6. It's staying consistent because it's CS2. It's the Steam game. It's expecting Helldivers to be on the same level as CS2 is just not reasonable because it's, it's not. It's not the same kind of game. But with these other games, I can keep pulling them up. Rainbow Six Siege. It, it has fluctuations, and it gradually trends downward. And then we have a big jump, and then it trends downward again. We get these big trends, because that's frankly how gaming works. Especially with a game like Helldivers, where it's kind of the same thing again and again and again and again and again, but we get new story for it. So we see little jumps whenever we get a big story mission. So we have back in April, we have that big boost rock operation reclamation, and then we can see them every once in a while, these big jumps, whenever we get something big in the story. And they're a little less each and each time, but that's kind of the thing. That's how Helldivers works. That's how these kind of story-driven multiplayer long-term games work. And it's just not going to be something that's going to consistently keep a player base. We're not going to get back to 500,000. We're probably not going to get back to 100,000 unless something really big happens. And we just turned a solar system into a black hole. And that got us to 80,000. I get it. We want to blame the studio and we want to blame Sony. And we want to say, oh, well, they did the linking shenanigans. And then we've seen it gradually drop down since then. But we really haven't. It's kept arguably a slower trend than it had before. It evened out around then. It's almost just coincidence 
Now, there is still the issue to be addressed of 177 countries not being able to access the game. That is a problem that needs to be addressed, but it needs to be noted that's not Arrowhead's thing, that's Sony's. We need to be getting on Sony's ass about that. You want to get on Arrowhead's ass, we can talk about things with the game. Issues regarding matchmaking, issues regarding balance, that is to say overbalancing the game, it tends to be the biggest complaint. Because we have really fun strategies that are just not being taken care of. And the team's aware of this, they've talked about it. They're not addressing it with the next patch, but they are aware of it and they, it's something they've said they want to fix. But it's not gonna happen overnight. The game's not going to trend upward. It just won't. The only way it's trending upward is if it gets a massive overhaul, completely changing everything about the game, and I don't think that's what anybody wants. So we're not going to see a massive trend upward, and I don't think we want to. Most people recognize this. They want the game improved, and they want to see players come back, but they recognize this is a game they enjoy that they like, and we kind of just have to recognize that this is it. This is the game. Changes we see from here on out are gonna be adjustments. We're gonna see story expansions, but we're not gonna get anything massive. We're gonna get occasional battle passes and blowing up planets. That's what we have to expect. And I like that. That's great. I'm happy to do this every week until I get tired of it. But until then, we have this game to enjoy and let's just maybe not hate on Arrowhead for things that aren't necessarily in their control. Back to the weekly news. Overnight to Thursday, a defense began on Heath with a new strategic guidance post. Strategic guidance. The Terminids are attacking Heath, the site of a newly constructed Seaf training facility. If the planet falls, the capability of the Seaf to replenish their forces and thereby aid in galactic defense will be significantly impacted. Therefore, Super Earth High Command recommends prioritizing the defense of Heath. The post, while appreciated, was likely unnecessary, with nearly 40,000 divers clearing the planet in approximately 10 hours. With no work needed on the MO and no other defenses, we demolished the defense in no time. Or at least, this all would have been the case if not for the major order announced directly after. Operation Enduring Peace Phase 2 Final The time has come to eradicate the Terminid Super Colony completely. The Helldivers will deploy to the surface of Meridia to deploy partial payloads of dark fluid across the planet. Once a critical mass is reached, the dark fluid will accrete into a super dense mass, triggering total planetary implosion. The Super Colony and its hyper reproductive Terminids will be destroyed. Speed is critical. Technicians at the Moradesh Research Facility are working non-stop to convert dark fluid into weaponized payloads for this operation. This high output cannot be maintained for long, even with safety and sleep protocols optimized for productivity. The destruction of an entire planet is an irreversible action, one that all Super Earth citizens know is a terrible tragedy. But the tyrannical actions of the Terminants have left us no alternative. This is it, Helldivers. The fate of the galaxy is in your hands. This is proving such a big deal that we gained a new trailer as well, and if you'd like to go check out my previously uploaded video last Thursday, the opening of that video is the trailer with uh, my thoughts on it provided afterwards. While the defense on Heath was still completed, it took just a tad longer than initially thought. Through the rest of Thursday onto Friday, Helldivers fought tooth and nail to deploy the dark fluid, but between the extreme difficulty of the mission due to the massive amount of bugs and the high regen rate of the super colony, we weren't seeing liberation rise at all. Both that and the lack of a timetable for how progress was going toward reaching critical mass left it feeling like we weren't really doing anything other than waiting for a cutscene or dispatch. Now, Saturday did see to a few of these problems. First, the bug causing breaches to occur directly under the drill, thereby making the mission basically impossible, was solved in this dispatch. Tectonic Drill Upgrades The Ministry of Science has rapidly engineered upgrades to the tectonic drill used to deploy the dark fluid on Meridia. The upgraded drills will propagate ultrasonic frequencies through the ground, preventing terminant breaches in its immediate vicinity. Secondly, while the Meridian assault had begun with free EMS mortars, the citizens of Super Earth stepped up on Saturday with yet another dispatch, Arsenal Augmentation. Patriotic citizens have organized to support the destruction of Meridia by making homemade napalm. 
Thanks to this grassroots effort, Napalm Eagle Strikes will augment all loadouts until Operation Enduring Peace concludes. I do have one more dispatch to go through, and this last one I just have to read first. Listen to this. Strategic Update The assault on the Super Colony appears to have spurred an increase in Terminate outbreaks on other planets. Scientists have likened this response to a kicked hornet's nest from the beloved childhood pastime. High Command advises Helldivers to maintain focus on the Super Colony. This may be our only chance to destroy it. Beloved childhood pastime. I don't know about that one. So yes, despite the defense that began on touring around noon, divers kept focusing on the major order knowing we could deal with touring later. Speaking of, the rates appeared to have been fixed Saturday as progress began slowly going up. Though with just under two days, we'd have to see what happened as we were barely at pace. Now before I move on to that, we did get a Discord post from Baskinator, one of the community managers on Discord. Greetings, Helldivers! We wanted to finally give you an idea of what's going on with our patch. First of all, our next patch is expected in the second week of June. Second, we have also pushed out an emergency hotfix to address enemies spawning on the drill in the current major order. See patch notes updates for more info. We did just speak of that. You are right, we've slowed down our cadence for patches. We'll go more into detail about it in an upcoming blog, but the short version is that dedicating more time to each patch will allow us to provide a higher quality standard and reduce the pressure on our teams. At Arrowhead, the physical and mental health of the team is very important to us, and maintaining a long-term sustainable work pace is crucial for our developers and staff to avoid putting anyone at the risk of burnout. Additionally, the cadence at which we were patching left us little time to engage with the community or build Helldive to alongside our players in meaningful ways. This slower pace enables us to focus our energy more effectively, resulting in more impactful updates and a more enjoyable game experience for everyone. You're also right that we should have communicated this change more clearly from the start. We sincerely thank you for your patience and support as we make this adjustment. Now I understand that Baskinator has made a few posts in the past that people haven't responded well to, and I also recognize that people want patches for this game because there's a lot of issues that people want to see addressed. However, the top priority is that the team feels safe and comfortable. So the people attacking the team and just generally being nasty is not really helping the situation. I understand people want things fixed. I want things fixed. There's problems with this game that I think need to be addressed. However, this game is still incredibly fun in its current state and they're only going to improve it as time goes on. But we need to be willing to let them, and that means being patient. I understand, that's not fun for everybody. Nobody likes being told to just hang on and be patient. But if it means that we're gonna be getting higher quality updates, I certainly think it's worth it. So please just consider. Back to the war, the bugs infestation quickly spread from Turing to Akamar 4. Planets quickly falling as divers valiantly fought for peace on Meridia. By Saturday's end, Meridia had risen to over 40%, with less than 13 hours to go, and the major order lasting for another 32. At around 1.30pm Mountain Daylight Time Sunday afternoon, it was over. Meridia collapsed into a black hole, drawing in all surrounding spores. Any ships present made emergency jumps to Super Earth, but it is currently safe to return to the Meridian Black Hole to observe our handiwork. Operation Enduring Peace has been successful. The Super Colony has been destroyed, and its place a beautiful black hole remains, drawing in every terminate spore within several billion kilometers. Interstellar spore levels have already sharply decreased in every system. The destruction of Meridia came not a moment too soon. 
While the Terminants continue their rampant spread across the galaxy without the accelerating effect of the Super Colony, containment is now once again possible. The Moradesh Research Facility has been decommissioned following the total exhaustion of all dark fluid stores. The tireless scientists who contributed to the Moradesh project have been awarded the Super Citizen Medal of Freedom. The front against the Terminants has been stabilized, but the war is far from over. We must continue the fight to contain the Terminants and redirect our efforts to finally reclaim the territory stolen by the Automatons. Congratulations is in order. The Helldivers won a historic victory for managed democracy today. As the dispatch states, the fight isn't over. However, we still have planets to save, including the bot planet Vega Bay that was currently under attack under the northwest side of the bot front with not enough divers planet side to defend it. Instead, divers took back to Vernon Wells to reclaim both it and our Seif bonus. Unfortunately, this had proven ineffective by the start of Monday. Vernon Wells slowly dropping below 15% through Sunday and only rising back up to 18% by Monday. Through Monday, we did receive a new major order. With the super colony destroyed, it is now finally possible to clear out the spreading terminate infestation. Since the terminates corrupted the perfectly designed terminate control system, they have infected world after world with their tyranny, forcing colonists to evacuate their homesteads. Now the time has come to reclaim the lost dreams of our hardworking citizens. Though we no longer have the aid of the TCS to hold the Terminants at bay, the new influx of Seif recruits from the recent mobilization will allow the containment of the Terminants through conventional means. Meanwhile, Super Earth's greatest chemists are hard at work on an improved, even more perfectly designed Termicide 2.0. Our citizens clamor for the opportunity to stake their claim and pursue their dreams upon the world stolen from them by the Terminids. We were tasked with taking Errata Prime, Turing, Akamar 4, and Fact Bay. By the time the order started, all but Turing being at 0%, with the latter being at 71% already. While Turing was complete in less than 8 hours, the others were going to take some coordination. Still at 0% by the end of the night. But we had over 3 days. We just need a planet per day. By Tuesday morning, we were on track with Errata Prime at nearly 20% and well on its way to being completed by the end of the day. Which leads us to Tuesday. As of the time of the Dream, Errata Prime was at nearly 50%, and by the end of the day, Errata Prime had reached almost 60%. While it was unclear if we'd be able to make it, as we did have an estimated 12 hours remaining on Errata Prime, all we had to do was combine with the 15,000 divers already on Akamar 4, and within no time, we would have both planets clear. And while I do respect the roughly 5,000 divers trying to take back Vernon Wells, Unfortunately, this is not the time for that. Please, join us on the Major Order, and we'll be able to get this clear in no time. Unfortunately, Errata Prime did fall off through the day, but by Wednesday, just before 6 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, we did manage to complete the planet. Akamar 4 might have been a little slower, but with an estimated 12 hours to liberation by 4.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and just under two days to complete the MO, there was no need to panic just yet. Unfortunately, with divers prioritizing the MO, it meant the new defense of Eris Pass was short on divers. With 16 hours to go, we were 1.26% shy of the liberation rate needed, with no sign of that changing soon. That's all I have for the weekly news. Before we wrap up for the end of the night, we do have today's clip of the week. This week provided by me. I was unable to get anybody on the subreddit or Twitter to give me permission to use their clips, so that's fine. I'm happy to provide one myself. You guys are just gonna have to accept that, well, my clips will always be perfect. Today's clip really represents why all stratagems are actually quite useful, showcasing the orbital walking barrage. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to be gay and do crimes, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, Helldivers.